We come today from across this Northeast region to celebrate the birth of your son, the light of the world, the Prince of Peace. We come today with anticipation and joy that with this birth, we can start anew. Come, let us worship wherever we are in this holy place. A litany adapted from Psalm 96. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. We sing a new song. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. We do declare. Give to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. We bring an offering and worship. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. We rejoice. Then shall the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. He in righteousness and we in faithfulness.
Surely he taught us to love one another. His law is love, and his gospel is peace. Change shall he break, for the slave is our brother, and in his name all oppression shall cease. Hi, I'm going to share a poem written by Dr. Maya Angelou for the 2005 White House Tree Lighting Ceremony. It is called Amazing Peace, A Christmas Poem. Thunder rumbles in the mountain passes and lightning rattles the eaves of our houses. Flood waters await us in our avenues. Snow falls upon snow, falls upon snow to avalanche over unprotected villages. The sky slips low and gray and threatening. We question ourselves, what have we done to so affront nature? We worry, God, are you there? Are you really there? Does the covenant you made with us still hold? Into this climate of fear and apprehension, Christmas enters. Streaming lights of joy, ringing bells of hope, and singing carols of forgiveness high up in the air. The world is encouraged to come away from rancor. Come the way of friendship. It is the glad season. Thunder ebbs to silence, and lightning sleeps quietly in the corner. Blood waters recede into memory. Snow becomes a yielding cushion to aid us as we make our way to higher ground. Hope is born again in the faces of children. It rides on the shoulders of our aged as they walk into their sunsets. Hope spreads around the earth, brightening all things, even hate which crouches breeding in dark corridors. In our joy, we think we hear a whisper. At first it's too soft, then only half heard. We listen carefully as it gathers strength. The word is peace. It is loud now, it is louder, louder than the explosion of bombs. We tremble at the sound, we are thrilled by its presence, it is what we have hungered for, not just the absence of war, but true peace, a harmony of spirit, a comfort of courtesies, security for our beloveds and their beloveds. 
We clap hands and welcome the peace of Christmas. We beckon the good season to wait a while with us. We, Baptists and Buddhists, Methodists and Muslims, say, come, peace. Come and fill us and our world with your majesty. We, the Jew and the Jaintas, the Catholic and the Confucian, implore you to stay a while with us so we may learn by your shimmering light how to look beyond complexion and see community. It is Christmas time, a halting of hate time. On this platform of peace, we can create a language to translate ourselves to ourselves and to each other. At this holy instant, we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ into the great religion of the world. We jubilate the precious advent of trust. We shout with glorious tongues at the coming of hope. All the earth's tribes loosen their voices to celebrate the promise of peace. We, angels and mortals, believers and non-believers, look heavenward and speak the word aloud. Peace. We look at our world and we speak the word aloud. Peace. We look at each other and then into ourselves. And we say without shyness or apology or hesitation, peace, my brother. Peace, my sister. Peace, my soul. Thank you.
Our scripture lesson today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 41 through 52. Listen for a word from the Lord. Now every year the parents went up to the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual to the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. But his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was with the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among the relatives and friends. And when they could not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. And after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers and listening to them and asking them questions. All who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said unto him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. And he said unto them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our sermon today is entitled, Let Jesus Grow Up. It's hard to imagine Jesus as a tween. The fifth stage in human development, identity versus role confusion. In this stage between 12 and 18, adolescents search for a sense of self and personal identity. Through an intense exploration of personal values, beliefs, and goals, according to Eric Erickson. Also, this is a stage when parents question, did this child grow up in our household? I am a mother, and I can identify with Mary in the text. I'm keenly aware of a mother's fear of losing their child. It's why I always held our son's hand extra tightly in crowds. Fortunately, I've never lost my son in a public place, but I have witnessed the fright of parents who have. The feeling travels between dismay and anger and relief. Nonetheless, I wonder with Christ's magnificent birth, how Mary watch Jesus for signs of his divinity. As she observed him grow from a nursing infant to a toddler and now a tween. What did she notice? Did Mary, like us, become so comfortable with the human side of Jesus that she no longer remembered his calling? Did she push to the back of her mind the prophecy spoken at his circumcision? If Mary forgot, what about us? There's more to the narrative here, so let's keep moving this morning. Luke wants us to know that Jesus grew up. We do not have an account of Jesus' teen years. Following the text, the next time Jesus appears, he is 30 years old. 
we are left to fill in the blanks, to know that during these formative years that he grows into the Messiah. Have you ever wondered if Jesus would do something else with his life? No, Jesus was clear about his call and purpose, Savior of the world, incarnate Emmanuel, God with us. Anne Reem's poem, The Cross in the Manger, connects the dots tying Jesus' birth with the resurrection. If there is no cross in the manger, there is no Christmas. If the babe does not become the adult, there is no Bethlehem star. If there is no commitment in us, there is no wise men searching. If there is no cup of cold water, there is no gold, no frankincense, no myrrh. If there is no praising God, there are no angels singing. If there is no spirit of alleluia, then there is no shepherd watching. If there is no standing up, no speaking out, no risk, there is no Herod and no flight into Egypt. If there is no room in our inn, then Merry Christmas mocks the Christ child, and the Holy Family is just a holiday card, and God will loaf our feasts and festivals. If there is no reconciliation, we cannot call Christ Prince of Peace. If there is no goodwill toward others, it can be packed away in boxes for another year. If there is no forgiveness in us, then there is no cause for celebration. If we cannot even now go to Gangatha, there is no Christ in us. There is no Christmas in us. If Christmas is not now, if Christ is not born into our everyday present, what is all the noise? about. What more can we say except the challenge to allow Jesus to grow up is personal? It is an invitation for self-reflection. Are we keeping Jesus as the babe in the manger? Is the church doing the same? Bishop John Satley says, we know where Jesus has gone. He's about doing his father's business, but we aren't ready to allow Jesus to grow up. We are not ready to give Jesus to God. We are not ready to accept that Jesus did not come to fulfill our expectations. He's not found in sentiments of the way things used to be or the way we wish things could be. Jesus is about the future. Jesus was born, lived, and died and rose to be about God's business of putting an end to our searching and making plain the ways of God, even if it means shattering our expectations. The adult Jesus takes on life with a spirit of nonconformity. Jesus sees culture and critiques its norms. Do they align with the will of God? One cartoonist sketched a group of church officers with Bible tucked underneath their arms and Jesus standing across from them saying, the difference between me and you is that you use scripture to determine what 
love means, and I use love to determine what scripture means. He challenges the norm of going along to get along. He embodied living countercultural. He understood the principles that a system is set up to receive the results that it gets. He also lived in such a way that hope is a powerful change agent and that the prayers of those with pure hearts and mustard seed size faith could move mountains. Jesus demonstrates radical grace that reached across to the margins and inside to the mainstream. He practiced whosoever will, let them come. Jesus told stories about a sickly woman who believed that all she needed to do was to touch the hem of his garment and she would be made whole. He pointed to a centurion man who had so much faith that he said to Jesus, you don't even need to come under the roof of my house, but just speak the word and my son will be well. Jesus talked about the resiliency of blind Barnabas, who like Jacob wrestled with the angel and would not stop crying out for mercy until he received his sight. Jesus didn't mind stirring the pot if necessary. He would not let a man wallow in complacency. This man had been at the pool too long, 38 long years waiting for something to happen. And Jesus said unto him, if you want to be healed, get up and walk. The good news for us this week, the Sunday after Christmas, is that like Mary in Jesus, our searching has ended. Jesus shows us the way to God. The text hints to the resurrection morning. Three days of searching results in an unexpected reality. Mary and Joseph do not find Jesus in the expected places. The safe confines of extended family and the familiar company of pilgrims after three days, Mary and Joseph find Jesus alive and well in the temple. At Jerusalem, sitting among the teachers of the law, listening and asking questions and living fully into his life's calling. Ironically, the company that Jesus is keeping at this very beginning will be the same company in just a few years that will try and convict him. Yes, unexpected, but the story points to what is also true in our reality. Something is birthed amid death and our buried dreams. Our searching ends and new life, meaningful life, the life that God intends, but not necessarily the life that we expect is manifested. As we personally and collectively allow Jesus to grow up, incarnational living will transform relationships, empower daring leaders, and give validity to our public proclamations that match our witness in the world. We will truly be Matthew 25 people. For a child has been born for us. A son has been given to us. Authority rests on his shoulders and his name is Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. 
I'm hopeful and I hope that you are too, that you are believing for a better 2022. We're due. It has been a season of long waiting. Let us continue to pray, come Lord Jesus. Let God Emmanuel be our foundation of hope. Allowing Jesus to grow up in us is also the way that we allow our faith to mature. Let us grow in faith and move beyond the elementary teachings of Christ. Let us make every effort to add to our faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. When we do these things, we allow Jesus to grow up in our hearts. Thanks be to God. Amen. Siblings in Christ, we gather from east and west, north and south, in unity as disciples of our newborn Lord, let us pray. In Jesus, God's word become flesh, to birth love in our hearts and peace in our world. As we celebrate this gift of life in Christ, let us pray for the church and the world. O oh God of love, draw us together in peace. Your messenger announces peace in shouts of breathless joy. Drive out the warring ways of our world and protect all who face danger this day as you guide our feet to travel with the one who is your peace. O oh God of love, draw us together in peace. Your word comes with justice to rule the earth with fairness Inspire the leaders of all nations and citizens of the world to order our economic lives, to promote dignity and equality for all in your global household. O oh God of love, draw us together in peace. Mountains and rivers clap and sing as your word makes all things new. Awaken us to the damage we do to your world and mend our ways that all creation might breathe again the liveliness of your blessing. O oh God of love, 
draw us together in peace. When shepherds met your newborn Christ, they eagerly ran to tell the news. Make us joyful messengers of your good news, who freely share your love in the world. O God of love, draw us together in peace. In Jesus, your love takes on human form to seek us out and guide us home. May Christ be born in us today to lead us into the lives for which we were made. O oh God of love, draw us together in peace. From your majesty on high to the lowliness of the stable, your word has power to sustain all things and through him we become your precious children. Comfort those who are hungry, sick, or suffering, and in all our afflictions anoint us with the oil of gladness as you visit us with your salvation. O oh God of love, draw us together in peace. For unto us a child is born this day to live and die and rise again Bless all who are born today and all who will die, that your will for them may be fulfilled in the one who is the way, truth, and life. O God of love, draw us together in peace. O God, receive the prayers of we, your children of the Synod of the Northeast and other places who are joining us, that through Christ, who is our glorious light, we may, like him, shine forth into the sun in bodies, breath, and beating hearts to sing your praise forevermore and as holy partners in a heavenly calling, dwell with you eternally. Amen. We pray all these things using the word that that newborn child would teach us later to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
May God open your heart to love. May your mind be open to wonder, your ears to life, and your life to the divine presence. May you experience God's peace for your troubles, God's forgiveness for your guilt, God's presence for your loneliness, God's light for your path, God's grace for your journey, and God's joy for your life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you.